One thing that I dislike about grinders is how arbitrary the tick marks are. So 10 on my grinder, probably nothing like 10 on your grinder. That's why I actually like to set my grinders up using the distance between the burrs. That's also called the burr gap. I find it a lot more intuitive for me and it makes communication a lot easier. Telling someone that a coffee is ground at 200 micron burr gap is way more informative than saying, it's a little finer than pour over, but coarser than espresso. You know, that specific instruction has been given to me multiple times and it's hugely frustrating because there's a lot of space in between pour over and espresso. And really, there's a lot of space within pour over and espresso as well. So giving a very vague uh, grind adjustment setting like a uh, recommendation like that, it's just not very useful. So what helps me set the burr gap repeatedly is using vernier scales combined with some knowledge of the grinder's engineering. So to start, it helps to know how grinders work. Generally, there's one burr that's adjusted to another burr and one burr is kind of fixed relative to the other. So this distance is usually controlled using like a screw on this side here. For example, on this fellow ode adjustment dial, so inside here is actually a screw. So if I adjust this grinder inwards, you can see that this bearing here pops out the more I screw it in. And the more I screw it out, the further back it goes. So that's how actually this ode is adjusting the grinder. As you screw this in, it pushes one of these burrs closer to the fixed burr. So if I were to unscrew this all the way, you can actually see here that there's a screw. These are threads. And the distance between these threads on the ode is about one millimeter. So that means from the peak of one thread to the peak of the next thread over, it's one millimeter. So if I want to adjust these burrs so that they're one millimeter closer together, what I can do is actually adjust this grinder one full rotation, right? And that will move this screw one millimeter inwards this way, and that will move the burrs closer together by one millimeter. Likewise, if I want to move them by, you know, say half a millimeter or 500 micron, I can just adjust it half a turn like this, and it will only move half that thread pitch. So if you'd like to make a smaller adjustment to the burr gap, you can move the dial a little less. So one trick that grinder manufacturers use is to use a larger adjustment dial. So here, this angle is actually 1 one hundredth of a rotation. And on that fellow ode, 1 one hundredth of a rotation would change the distance between the burrs by 10 micron. So you can see, if you have a large dial, there's a lot of space here. You can move it to make that 1 one hundredth of a rotation. But if you have a smaller dial, you have to make a smaller, more precise rotation, right? So that's one tool that a lot of these grinder manufacturers use to make it easier to adjust and make finer adjustments. Because you can see here that the Ode's dial is actually a lot bigger than the size of the screw threads you saw earlier. Just to make it a little easier to control the, the grind size. And likewise, the P100 and the DF64 also have these very large adjustment collars that you, you kind of move. So this is one trick to make more precise adjustments to a grinder just by making the adjustment dial bigger. But these big adjustment dials are still limited by the size of the marks you can reasonably print on the dial. It can be hard to re repeatedly adjust the dial inside of a tick mark, which I think limits repeatability. And that's really where the vernier comes in. So let's take a look at how a vernier works. So here's a little paper model that I printed. And you can think of this as kind of a linear scale of, of adjusting your, your burr gap, right? So this little red star here would be your uh, dial, your grind indicator on your grinder. And as you move your burrs apart, right? your dial indicator moves apart too. So it's pretty easy to, to line up at you know, one marking or two markings, right? And that changes the size of your burr gap. But when you're in between a setting, like say here, am I at 0.3 or 0.4? It's pretty hard to tell. And that's really where this vernier comes in. So let's replace that single tick mark with this vernier. And it looks complicated at first, but it's actually um, pretty simple. So each vernier tick mark here is actually nine tenths the size of a standard major tick mark on the bottom. So that way, if you were to make an adjustment of one tenth, now the first vernier mark, which was you know, nine tenths away, is now lining up with a mark on the major axis, right? So here, this gap is one tenth the size of a major mark. Again, if I move it two tenths over from closed, now the two on the vernier is lining up and this gap is two tenths. So you can do that for every single one of these marks on the vernier. Here's three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, you know, et cetera. And finally, when you get all the way back to not, uh, 10 tenths, now the, um, the, the burr spacing mark, the, the original mark and the last mark here are lining up. So now you can very easily, repeatedly measure to a resolution of the tenth of the major axis. And that's really helpful. So here I'm at 0.5. It can always come back to 0.5, right? There's no question of you know, whether it was at 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. You can come back exactly to that, to that level. That's what makes these verniers really nice to use and really repeatable. It's just a lot easier to visually line up two lines than it is to estimate how far inside this tick mark 
Not yet. So I've designed three different verniers for these three different grinders. The first vernier I designed was for this fellow Ode. So I replaced the stock dial on the Ode because the stock dial I found was very unintuitive. The stock tick marks were 25 microns away and they were divided into thirds for whatever reason. So it's just not a really intuitive scale to use. My new scale here has 100 tick marks, each tick mark representing 10 microns. So you can see 0, 100, 200. That's the bird gap here that's uh, being adjusted inside the grinder. And now you can also see this vernier here. This color is fading a little because I've been touching it. So this vernier allows me to get a one micron resolution, like one tenth of a tick mark, right? Every tick mark is 10 microns. So one tenth of 10 is one, obviously. So then here, for example, if I line up this um, zero tick mark on my vernier with the 100, I know I'm at exactly 100 micron bird gap. If I line up the five marker here uh, with a, a mark on the major axis, I'm at 95 micron, and I can also go down to, you know, 91 micron just by lining up this one with the major tick mark on the axis, the one on the vernier with the major tick mark on the axis. So, you know, this is super clean, super easy. It's one of the nicest verniers I've used because the scale <laughs> represents an actual physical quantity. You don't have to do any math. You know, if you said 200, you're actually at 100 micron. So the second vernier I made was for the P100. Because the stock tick marks on the P100 actually face this adjustment collar, all I had to do is really make the vernier scale itself. I didn't have to replace the, um, the major tick mark scale. One interesting design feature on the P100, which I, I find aesthetically very pleasing, is that you know, there are some thicker lines at these numbered ticks, and then there's thinner lines in between. But that did pose a, a somewhat of a challenge when designing the vernier, because I needed to account for both the thicker and the thinner lines. So that's why each tick mark on the vernier has two white lines and a black space in the middle. The two white lines are actually the width of a major tick mark, or one of these thicker tick marks on the major axis. And then the black space in the middle is the width of one of the smaller tick marks. So you can line up these smaller tick marks. For here example, I'm, I'm lined up at the, the second vernier tick mark. So that makes this vernier actually usable with the stock P100 scale. You know, weirdly on the P100, the tick marks are 7.5 micron bird gap distance. So I actually found myself using a calculator a lot with the P100 if I'm converting to and from uh, bird gap in microns, right? You gotta just do that multiplication, 7.5 times whatever your uh, tick mark setting is. The most recent vernier I made was for the DF64. And this DF64 is another weird grinder to make a vernier for because the tick marks on the, on the grinder are on the outside of this adjustment collar. And you couldn't do the same thing you did with the P100. And I didn't feel like printing out another um, scale, another major axis scale for the DF because this one is so nice and shiny and just like how it felt. So to get around this, I designed kind of an adjustment ring that sits around this uh, stationary bird carrier here. So right now I can set this to zero. You can tell it's at zero because this major tick mark marker is at zero. And you can see that there's a little bit of white showing through on the zeros ticks of the DF64. So let me see if I can get this a little closer. So you can see here that there's some white showing through through the zero. So as I adjust this grinder, you can see that white is now visible in kind of different tick marks on the vernier. So now I'm at 0.5 because you can kind of see that the white is showing up through here. Right, so as I adjust this out, I can go to six, seven, eight, nine, and then back to 10. So now I'm actually at exactly 1.0. Um, and that's just how the vernier on this DF reads. You go all the way out to 1.5 right here, where this uh, white is now showing up in the fifth part here. So that's how the vernier on the DF64 works. And the DF actually has the weirdest kind of stock distance for each of these ticks. It's actually 10.4 microns per each tick. So yeah, you really need to use a calculator for this one. A major criticism I hear about these verniers is that the grinders themselves weren't designed with micron level adjustment in mind. And you know, while I agree with that, I, I do think that there's more play and slop in these grinders that exceeds a micron, but I don't think that really justifies adding another source of variability that's a uh, setting, setting variability when it's just super easy to fix that with precision. If you want any of these verniers, I'll leave links to the designs so you can print them yourself. Just check the description of this video. Uh, if you want a vernier for the DF64 here, and you don't have a 3D printer, you can check out my dad's Etsy shop. You know, he produces and sells a lot of my designs. So if you like my content, really think about supporting him in his retirement. He's on a fixed income, so every sale really helps him out a lot, especially in this insane economy. Well, I've got more content lined up, including grinder and bird comparisons. Also, I've been working on some pretty cool profiles for the Decent and the Flare 58. So stay tuned for more. Thanks.